So the message, uh, Roy asked me to bring a message on the sanctity of life. Um, so I just call it love life. Um, because if love life comes uh, to your church, I think the title of the sermon should be Love Life. <laughs> And you heard some of the statistics. I, I feel like as I was listening and I heard kind of the gasps, uh, the fact that um, I guess one of the statistics that stuck out to me is the fact that 250 abortions take place every week here in the Tri-County area. And that's a lot. Um, that is, and that is close to home. I want to tell you that there was a woman many years ago who attended our church and asked to speak to me privately about something that was seriously causing her a lot of um, pain. Um, she was grieving uh, in, in a major way. At the time, uh, we did not have a church building. We rented a school. And so where do you meet you know, when you counsel? And so my wife was home. And so we, uh, I invited her to come to our house. And we sat at the kitchen table. And she began to just weep. She just cried. For a long time, it was, it was troubling her terribly, uh, what was going on in her life. And so when I finally got to the, the reason that she was so upset, she was grieving the loss of a child that she had aborted. And it was years before that it had happened. But she was still grieving the loss. There were some complications in the pregnancy that she was told would be the best thing is to abort, and, and she did end the life of her child, and she was devastated. Even though she had asked God for forgiveness, she was still, still clearly hurting. Um, she will no doubt grieve the rest of her life. I tried to help her understand that Jesus weeps with her. Um, he grieves when we grieve, and... I bring up that story because I don't think many people understand the mental and emotional toll or, or um, how that affects people when there is an abortion. Clearly, in her case, she was devastated. I just want to pray for a moment for all those that have been affected by it. If you would pray with me. Thank Lord, you. thank you for the the example that your son Jesus gives us, that he weeps with us, he cries with us when we are hurting. And Father, for all the women that maybe have had an abortion or, or maybe we know someone that is close to us, but Lord, that you would embrace them, that they would turn to you and your face would shine upon them, that you would embrace them, Lord, comfort them, <clears throat> as they continue to grieve the loss. Father, I pray their eyes would be open to know your love in a greater way today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So abortion is a highly controversial topic in our society, and uh, some say it's a political issue. Some say it's a moral issue or a moral dilemma. Some say it's a crisis. Some say it's a spiritual battle. Some don't say much of anything about it. Some are afraid to talk about it. If it doesn't hit close to home, it might as well as be happening in another country. You know that truth? You know, if something's not hitting close to home, it might as well be going on somewhere else. But the truth is, it is happening close to home because just three miles from here, Monday through Saturday, there is an abortion clinic in which women are going into seven or six days a week. It is close to home. Women daily are ending their child's life. And I'm sure if we really think about that and we let that resonate in our mind, we will understand. And hopefully it will break our heart. When you read God's word, you see a truth. Lots of truth. You see this truth in Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah was a prophet. He spoke for God to God's people. This is what he said in Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I dedicated you. Mm -hmm. Next Sunday, we will have a baby dedication here. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
See, that's when life begins. In Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14, King David loved to write poetry. He loved to write songs that glorify God. And he said, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. Just let that sink in. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. Therefore I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Mm -hmm. This is the truth that the Word of God gives us. Life begins at conception, and abortion ends what God wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. That's heartbreaking. Yes, this is a political issue. Because the law has made it legal to end the life. Yes, this is a moral issue, a moral dilemma. Because in Romans we are told that when you sin, it suppresses the truth. Romans 1.24, God gave them up to the lusts of, the heart, of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a spiritual battle. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4. <clears throat> in their case, the God of this world... Was blinded, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And Jesus said, the thief, the evil one, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy life. But Jesus comes to give life so we can have it abundantly. And yes, this is a crisis, because as I shared that story, it's an internal crisis Men and women must live with the decision of ending a life. Even though God forgives, we often have a hard time forgiving. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's good. For all these reasons and so many more, abortion is a huge issue. But what can we really do about it? How can we make a difference? I just want to talk to our men for a moment. To our men. Let me ask you this question. What was the very first thing that God did for man after he created him? He made Adam in the Garden of Eden. The very first thing he did for men was give him a job. <laughs> and all the men said, Amen. <laughs> we like to work. It gives us a purpose. And that's because God gave man a job. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. But that word keep means to guard. To guard it. To protect it. We have this, this, this internal feeling inside of us, man, that says we must provide for our family. We must protect our family. <laughs> It wasn't just because your dad worked hard or your grandpa worked hard and you learned a work ethic from them. It's because God gave it to you, this desire to work really hard and to protect your family, to guard them and keep them, especially your spouse. One of the most misunderstood Bible verses is a verse about women. It's in 1 Peter 3, 7. Peter writes, Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now the feminists will tear that verse right out of their Bibles. Because it says they are the weaker vessel. But what did Peter mean when he said this? If we go back to that part where it says showing honor, if we just sit on that slide for a minute, showing honor. Honor is the word that means a price in which, a value in which the price is fixed. Mm. To honor is to value and not change the value. You see, Peter lived in a time and a culture where they didn't value women the same as they value men. But he says, no. The value is fixed. You are to honor your wife. Mm -hmm. And this is how you honor her. What does it say next? She is an heir with you of the grace of life. And he even points out, if you don't do that, God's not going to hear you when you pray. Wow. That's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. 
And what did he mean when he said the woman is a weaker vessel? Simply that, in general, women are not physically as strong as men. Now, I would never say that to the girl I knew in eighth grade who was a farm girl. <laughs> and she could throw bales of hay farther than I could throw a baseball. <laughs> if she would have only caught my little smart mouth friend Derek, she would have ripped his head off like a chicken for dinner. <laughs> she was a strong girl. Sometimes women are stronger than men. That's all Peter meant here. Men are to value their wives as they value themselves. And you can read Ephesians 5 and see the same thing Paul writes to, to uh, husbands and wives. We are to protect our wives and our children. And men, if anyone has ever threatened your family, then you know the wrath of God was awakened in you. And you would do anything to protect them. Am I right? Yes. Well, let that be awakened in all of us men when we think of abortion. Amen. Let that be our thought. Because this is an egregious threat to the sanctity of life. We must protect our women and these babies. Let me talk to the women now. Why did Adam name his wife Eve? Genesis 3.20 The man called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. The name Eve means life. That's what it means. It means life. Eve was given the special ability to bring life physically into the world. Because God gave women this wonderful gift, Women had, by nature, a desire to nurture their children. Am I right, ladies? Yes. You brought this child in the world, you want to nurture them, protect them. This woman who sat at my table in tears, she wept because she wanted to protect this child. She didn't. May the heart of a nurturer be awakened in every woman. May you stand up for life. You're the ones who brought or bring life into the world. Men, we protect. Women, you nurture. And together we can make a difference mm -hmm. in our community. We can save lives. We can embrace life, which is what we are doing already. We can love life, not just one week a year, but we can love life all the time. Yeah. I understand this truth. If the issue of abortion doesn't break your heart, you probably won't take action. You might participate on Wednesday, you might pray, you might fast. You might go on a prayer walk with us on Saturday. But if it doesn't break your heart, then that's about all you're probably going to do. But this breaks Roy's heart. This breaks Barry's heart. This breaks Justin Reeder's heart, the founder of Love Life, and it breaks a lot of people's hearts, which is why they take action. And we, the church, need to take action. Let's not sit on our hands. We're ambassadors for Christ. Think about that. We are ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20 tells us we're ambassadors. God makes his appeal through us to the world. We implore others on the behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. We're not called by God to sit on our hands. As Timothy was told by Paul, we are called to lift up holy hands in prayer. We're called to do something. And we're going to do something this week. I hope that you'll commit to it. We've been making our way through the Gospels. Each week, this whole year, in the last couple weeks, I brought to you this message from the Gospels that was from Jesus teaching with a child in his arms. Do you remember when we, when we talked about that? How Jesus grabbed a child and is holding on to this child and he's teaching his disciples with a child in his arms. And in Matthew 18, he tells the parable of the lost sheep. He says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. 
For I tell you, in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains to go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. God rejoices when one sinner repents and turns to him. He rejoices over that. The church rejoices over that. What will God do? How much will he rejoice when we save one child from an abortion? We are called to do something. And next Wednesday, you can join us. Next Saturday, you can join us. I pray that you will. I pray that your heart will be broken to protect and to nurture these unborn children. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. We need it. You give us what we need right when we need it. Thank you for your mercy. That even those that have had an abortion, there is still forgiveness. Amen. Father, I pray that you would do a miracle in the lives of the women, just in our community. Father, I pray that as we, as we step up, as we take time out of our busy lives, and we commit to praying and fasting and walking and praying and singing and coming together, I pray, Lord, that we would see, we would see that you are always working pray that you would change lives, save lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.